Anna Carlson, editor of Practical Welding Today magazine, and we're downtown Minneapolis on the campus of Minneapolis Community and Technical College. Uh, we're here to discuss pulse spray MIG welding. It's a transfer mode, and Todd Breidegum, who is the welding instructor, is going to be taking us through that. Thanks, Amanda. I'm Todd Breidegum at Minneapolis Community and Technical College, and today we're going to talk about gas metal arc welding pulse spray transfer. There are many advantages to pulse spray transfer over the other GMAW transfers and we'll take a look at those advantages as well as the power source and how we dial in the machine to get the optimum transfer. So if we take a look at our GMAW process variables chart, uh, we have down here the different types of metals that we can weld with GMAW, steel, uh, high strength low alloy steels, stainless steels and aluminum. And today we're going to be welding uh, plain carbon steel. We have several different transfers. We have short circuit spray and pulse spray. Uh, we're going to be going with the pulse spray transfer today. And we can weld a wide variety of metal thicknesses with that process, anywhere from 20 gauge to inch and a half. Today we'll be welding on quarter and three eighths inch material. We also have a variety of wire types that we can use. But the most common is ER70S6, and that's the wire we'll be using today at 035 diameter. Notice under voltage here we have load voltages listed for short circuit and spray, but under pulse spray it's a heat reference number. Uh, different manufacturers call this number different things. In other words, uh, Lincoln calls it trim, um, Miller calls it an arc adjust. Uh, so there's just a lot of different names for the same thing. We need to use an argon rich shielding gas with pulse spray transfer and we're going to use a mix of 90% argon and 10% CO2 and that 90-10 mix is fairly common out in industry. There are others you can use but as long as you're using a shielding gas that's argon rich, in other words 80% argon and higher in the mix, you can achieve a true spray or pulse spray transfer. We're going to run our shielding gas at a flow rate between 35 and 45 cubic feet per hour. The flow rate's a little higher because we are going to be doing pulse spray transfer, which is a hotter arc, and we're going to be a little bit further away from the puddle. We're going to have a little bit longer stick out. So we want to have a slightly increased flow rate to support those two things. And our, our electrode stick out is going to be anywhere between half inch and five eighths. It's one of the problems that welders have when they're used to doing processes like stick and TIG is to be very close to the metal when welding. But with processes like spray and pull spray, you actually want to pull back and have a little bit longer stick out in order for the spray transfer process to happen properly. Pulse spray transfer has a wide variety of applications of industry. Anywhere from aluminum, steel, stainless steel, really almost any metal can be welded with the pulse spray transfer process. It's different than a straight MIG process in that instead of just one current, you actually have two currents in the same circuit. And that current alternates between a peak current and a background current. And the peak current is generally where the metal transfer is happening. And the background current helps everything stay a little cooler than it would be otherwise. The pulses can be run anywhere between 30 and 300 pulses per second, depending on how the machine is set. But because we have that cooling effect of the pool, we can actually weld a wider variety of thicknesses of metal, and we can weld in all position with spray-like transfer. So we have our cylinder of C10 here uh, 90, with a balance of 90% uh, argon. So we have an argon-rich shielding gas for our pulse spray transfer to take place. Again, I always recommend being, uh, uh, having the, not being in front of the flow meter when you open the cylinder valve. You want to crack open the cylinder valve and then open fully when in use. This particular machine has a purge button, so we're going to press that purge button and adjust our gas flow accordingly. We use a little knob on the side to adjust the flow meter up and down. We're reading the ball. Um, some manufacturers of flow meters say to read the top of the ball. Some say to read the middle of the ball. You just need to be in the ballpark. So I've set my gas flow and I need to pay attention to two controls on the machine. I need to pay attention to uh, wire feed speed and I also need to pay attention to my heat reference number. In this case, it's called arc adjust. Now we're on a pulse spray program. Again, the wire feed speed indicator is lit up, and so we have 230 inches per minute for our wire feed speed currently. But you notice that the light has changed here. We have arc adjust, and our arc adjust is at 60. 
What arc adjust does is it, it lengthens or shortens the arc length. In other words, where the wire is burning off in the pull spray process. The higher the arc adjust number, the more the arc will, uh, the higher the arc will be, and the, the more it'll burn off and be a wider puddle. As I decrease arc adjust, the, wor the wire burns off at a lower point, and uh, I have a much shorter arc length. We'll run a demonstration to show uh, how that arc adjust affects our arc length when welding. Next thing we're gonna do is tell the machine exactly what we're doing with the weld. And so we use our process setup button uh, to decide which process we wanna weld with. There's a straight MIG program, and there's several different ones on here. I'm gonna go with AccuPulse, which is a pulse spray program. Press the button again, and it, tells, it asks me, well, what type, of, uh, what type of wire are you welding with? Is it steel? Is it aluminum? Is it metal core wire? Is it stainless steel? We're welding with a steel wire, so we're gonna make sure we tell the machine that that's what we're using. It'll ask us the tensile strength of the wire. In this case, it's a ER70S6, so the tensile strength is 70,000 pounds per square inch. The diameter of the wire is 035, so that's correct. We don't need to dial that in. And we are using a C10 gas. Once we've adjusted our gas flow, our wire feed speed, and our heat reference number, the next thing I always do whenever I'm wire feed welding is check the gun. The gun is the business end of the wire feed process. It's where your wire feed from, your gas flow, and where the wire is electrified. So it's very important to check the components to make sure they're in good condition. So first thing I do is I take off the nozzle, and this is a two-piece nozzle insulator system, uh, which is nice because I can adjust my contact tube setback to any amount I want. Uh, I always check the nozzle to make sure it's clean and spatter free. Here we have our insulator right here. Again, the insulator is a separate piece with this system uh, and it just comes off the gun. And then we have our contact tip. And in this case, the contact tip is actually a little loose from the last person who used it. A loose contact tip can cause an erratic arc, so you wanna make sure you have your contact tip snug. I wanna take a minute to talk about contact tips. Contact tips are sized for the diameter of the wire and these are both 035 contact tips. One is a standard 035 contact tip, and one's a little bit larger. That's because it's a heavy duty contact tip. Heavy duty contact tips are larger because they can perform well with the increased heat uh, of the welding arc and the weld pool during the pulse spray transfer process. We wanna take into consideration our contact tube setback, especially with pulse spray transfer, again, because the volume of heat of the arc so right now our contact tube setback is flush. Uh, in other words, the contact tube is flush with the nozzle and so our contact tube setback is basically at zero. Uh, because this is a two-piece nozzle insulator system, I can actually pull the nozzle back and expose the contact tip. For short circuit transfer, uh, this contact tube setback is really not a factor because we're welding with lower heats. The only thing you'd need to be concerned about is making sure you have an adequate flow of shielding gas to your weld pool. However, with pulse spray transfer, your contact tip will take so much heat from the arc, it could melt. So we wanna have a little bit of a contact tube set back below flush, maybe about one eighth of an inch. We're gonna make a bead with the pulse spray transfer process. Right now we have the wire feed speed at 400 inches per minute, but we have our arc adjuster heat reference number set pretty low. And so what I think we're gonna get here is more of a short circuiting transfer instead of a pulse spray transfer, and you'll be able to hear the difference. Short circuit transfer has a crackling noise, it's fairly aggressive, and you'll have a lot of spatter. With pulse spray, it's more of a humming sound or a bumblebee sound with virtually no spatter. So what we'll do is weld with this wire feed speed and we'll increase our heat reference number as we go, watching what happens to the molten pool as we weld. So for our 400 inches per minute, you saw as we adjusted our heat reference number, we went from a, a, a bar arc buried in the puddle, very crackly, very aggressive with a lot of spatter, to into the true spray, pulse spray transfer, which was 
nice and uh, spatter free, nice humming sound. And as we increase that heat reference number, you could see the arc actually increase in length. And at the end of that weld, we were a little bit far away with the arc length, further than I like to be. So again, finding that, that sweet spot is important and it helps to have somebody else adjust the machine as you weld so you can really see what's going on. Okay. Next, we're gonna apply a fillet weld to this horizontal lap joint. And this is quarter inch steel. We'll make a full size quarter inch fillet weld in one pass. <laughs> So that last fillet weld we made, we had a wire feed speed of 450 inches per minute and a heat reference number of 68. We've turned down the wire feed speed to 400 inches per minute and we have a heat reference number of 57. So by lowering the wire feed speed and the heat reference number, we can get a smaller fillet weld in the same joint. So in other words, now we're gonna make a fillet weld that's less than a quarter inch. Next, we're going to place a fillet weld in this T-joint. The T-joint's in the horizontal position, meaning that this fillet weld's gonna be affected by gravity. That pulse spray puddle is so fluid that it'll tend to run down with gravity, even though it is all position welding. So we're going to actually tilt the gun angle down a little bit to compensate for that fluid puddle. We're welding on 3 8 inch steel plate, and so we're gonna put a fairly large fillet weld in here in one pass. So by tilting our gun down slightly, we achieve two things with this horizontal fillet weld. We have a fillet weld with equal legs, in other words, the same amount of weld on the base plate as on the top plate. And the second thing we did was prevent undercut along the top plate. I've made two more passes on this uh, fillet weld on this T-joint in the horizontal position. The second pass runs in between the first pass and the base plate. And you notice the crater of the pool of that weld is running right in line with the toe of the first pass. I had my gun angle tilted up to get good penetration into the base plate. The third pass I made tying the second pass into the top plate and for that I actually angled my gun down again so I would get to help support that liquid pool and prevent undercutting the top plate. Gas metal arc welding pulse spray transfer is an all position welding process, so we're gonna make a vertical up fillet weld on this lap joint. I've turned the machine settings way down. I've turned them down to 48 for the heat reference number and 250 inches per minute for the wire feed speed. I am going to go vertical upwards. Uh, vertical upwards will give me a lot more penetration into the plate than vertical down. So even though we're welding 3 8 inch plate with much lower settings, I'm not so worried about penetration or fusion into the joint because we are going vertical up and that will give the, chance, the arc a chance to cut into the base metal and then the wire to fill it back in.
As you can see, gas metal arc welding pulse spray transfer is a very effective welding process. You do need an argon rich shielding gas, but as long as you have 80% argon, you can achieve that pulse spray transfer that's virtually spatter free. Uh, whatever blend you use, whether it's uh, argon and CO2, or if you add a little bit of oxygen in there, pay attention to your heat reference number and your wire feed speed, as these different shielding gas blends may affect your welding parameters. Remember, check the components in your gun and make sure everything in your system, wire feed system, is functioning properly. A bad contact tip that causes an erratic arc will not make you a better welder. In fact, it'll make welding a whole lot more difficult. So make sure to maintain your equipment properly. Again, be comfortable, be calm, and weld on. Whether it's TIG, wire feed, stick, or oxyacetylene, I've written a lot of my thoughts in this book, How to Weld. It's available at Amazon.com and Barnes and Noble, along with other retailers. Uh, and I think it's a good reference covering much of the material that we've talked about in these videos and more.